technology. The foundation also supports the... Protesters hit the streets, representing everything from sea turtles to steel workers. The anarchists were a tiny fraction of the thousands who marched on Seattle, but they were a catalyst. Their hammers shattered any hope that the World Trade Meeting would recover from its chaotic start. Hey, on your camera, that These are pictures of the Seattle riots that you've never seen before. They were shot on home video by the anarchists themselves. The idea was to document abuses by the police and to glorify their revolution. A revolution against the United States, against technology, against modern society. I've always wanted to be in a revolution. <laughs> and we are not afraid. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. <laughs> yeah, I'm <a> Disney World. <laughs> This is Seattle Police Chief Norm Stamper, four days before he resigned. There's, there's one group in Eugene that is claiming credit for all of this. They're basically saying that they uh, disrupted, if uh, you know, their effort was to close down WTO, but they were successful in disrupting it. They were successful in trashing our city. Stamper was talking about Eugene, Oregon, the home of about 100 militant anarchists who advocate violence against big business. They live in a communal neighborhood, living essentially hand to mouth. We sat down with several of them. They told us that they believe corporate greed is ruining the environment and enslaving mankind. How many of you were in Seattle? Four? Maybe, maybe not. You don't want to be known as having been in Seattle? Yep. What are the masks all about? Solidarity. Effectiveness. I'm sorry? Effectiveness. Effectiveness? Yeah, we, we want to pose a credible threat to the biggest, most powerful people in the world. And when that's the kind of work you want to do, and you want to do it over your whole life, you want to be able to keep doing your work without quickly being apprehended and being sent away to jail for a long time. In their Eugene neighborhood, they take pride in a subsistence lifestyle. They tore up this parking lot and turned it into a garden. There's nothing a revolutionary likes better than broccoli. And most of them are vegetarians. Many of them went to college, and a few have jobs to buy the things they need. But they spend as little time as possible in the capitalist world they reject. What does that get you? Smashing the windows of a Starbucks or a Nike store? What's the point? Economic incentive to not hold meetings like that at all, much less in the Northwest, and psychological incentive to reconsider the kinds of the kind of society that we live in that fills our world with Starbucks and McDonald's. You, you look at the pictures, there seems to be a lot of anger there. And frankly, I don't understand where it comes from. Love of people, love of the living world, love of life in general. Love of life. It's, um, it power. didn't look like love on TV. Rage well, the destruction of the things well, that, that are most important and about the survival of the planet and, and us as a species and every other species on this planet that's being decimated. L let's be frank here. What I'm hearing you say right here in this interview is that you advocate violence. We don't consider... Mm -hmm. um, no, I, yes, no, I, I see head shaking both I ways. I consider property itself, private property, to be a form of violence. I consider the state to be a form of violence. I don't think that destroying that which maintains violence to be violence. Breaking a window or spray painting, in my opinion, is not violent at all. It's against the law. <laughs> we reject the law. The law was not decided by us. We are being governed by a system that we do not agree with, that we completely reject. So, Therefore, the law means nothing. The nation may have been blindsided by the Battle of Seattle, but Eugene has seen it before. In fact, Eugene police warned Seattle about what happened here last June. 
It was a world trade protest in miniature. The anarchists declared war on corporations, on profits, and on what they see as the destruction of the earth. The protesters staged an anti-technology bash that quickly ran amok. They smashed a sign at the bank, uh, proceeded down the street. Eugene Police Captain Thad Buchanan had a riot on his hands. They began blocking intersections surrounding cars and started picking up rocks and filling their pockets. At that point, it was very clear that uh, we were in for a rough time. Angry neighbors got rough with the anarchists. Tear gas flew, and the melee rolled into a city park. The fact that we were into the park fairly deeply and, and starting to be flanked caused us to withdraw from the park, and uh, they continued to, to throw rocks and other projectiles at us. Wait a minute. They began to surround you, and yeah. you had to retreat for a time? Mm hmm Yes. My view of the, this more militant and violent group is that, that they are dangerous and violent criminals. They, they terrorize uh, innocent people. People that have nothing to do with their cause become their victims. The anarchists say the protesters became victims of the police. The overreaction of some cops in Seattle gives the revolutionaries new ammunition. It's interesting to me, like, the, the butterfly getting tear gassed, I think, is, like, an interesting concept. Ream produced a documentary, which he says exposes police violence that the news cameras never captured. And this is the crazy one. I mean, people just sitting there. What do you make of the police response in Seattle? It was not surprising. Not surprising. I don't think any of us here are surprised with, you know, the firing of rubber bullets, the firing of wooden bullets, firing of tear gas. We're, we we fully what, expected this. That's a they souvenir from that. Seattle there? That was their historic, that they just fulfilled their historic role. I mean, if you show, show me that again. What, what is that? That's one of the rubber pellets that they were firing. They used a lot of different kinds of ammunition, apparently. And I think we need to make something clear. The first people that were targeted by police were the traditional nonviolent protesters who were locked down. They were the first people to get pepper spray. They were the first people to get shot at by rubber bullets. They were the first people to get tear gassed. And the idea that the police came in to stop people from breaking windows, and that's why they used this force, is, is not true. You know, a, a lot of people watching this are saying to themselves, I don't feel oppressed. I've got a job, I've got a family, the country is richer than it's ever been. What's the problem? The problem is, is that comes at the expense of, of the earth, you know. How are they rich? They're rich because of, of clear cuts and strip mines and, and Indonesian sweatshops and slave labor. I mean, that's, that's how America is rich. They're not rich in, in anything that I want to be rich in. I don't want to be a rich man. That would make me sick. I would be... I would ha hate myself, probably, if I considered myself a rich man. I believe we, we're seeing the beginning of a new movement after decades of no social movements, really. I think... Uh, By definition, think anarchists have no Seattle, leaders, the, uh, but John Zerzan serves as sort of a philosophical guide for the group in Eugene. He writes books that advocate the end of the industrial world. Every day, I mean, it's not even headlines anymore. Somebody goes to work and just starts mowing people down. Doesn't that tell us something? What does it tell Why does you? that happen? That, that there's something fundamentally wrong. There's something fundamentally rotten. The system has to go. Are you saying no government? No, oh, of course. That's just, uh, as an anarchist, that's a minimum. That's just, a, that's virtually a given for me. You can't take care of six billion people on this planet without organization. I agree. But self-organization, I think, is... Uh, is the way to go and of course the six billion people aren't being taken care of anyway are they i mean people are starving there's it's not like the system is actually working zerzan advocates the end of industry and technology 
If that sounds familiar, you've heard it before in the writings of Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber. Zerzan believes the bombings were wrong, but he endorses the Kaczynski philosophy. You in touch with Ted Kaczynski? We correspond a little bit. What do you make of Kaczynski? Uh, well, I think he's sane. He struck me as very sane. What do you make of Ted Kaczynski? If you read the interview um, in the Earth First Journal of Ted, he talks the whole time about his connection to wild nature, his connection to the earth and animals. And it was when he saw that his sanctuary, that he thought was safe, far away from everyone else, was finally being bulldozed and developed. It was then that he snapped and did what he thought he could to reclaim power over that situation and hold those who were responsible for it responsible. He's a murderer. So I wish the people he murdered. No, but I don't. I mean, I don't condone. I don't condone Kaczynski's behavior. I, I don't agree with with the taking of life in order to protect life. I, I think he wanted to point out that people were like inherently individuals were inherently responsible for things that were happening. There are people out there that are just like anyone else who are making the decisions to clear cut you know, old growth forests and who are making these decisions happily because their pack pockets are getting fatter and those people should be held responsible, you know? I, I, I don't think that what he did was wrong. What do your parents think of all of this? You look to be about the age of uh, people who had parents in the 60s. My mom's too busy working and when she's not working she's filling her mind with TV and drinking Pepsi Cola, so. Yeah, I, I know Probably at least one of my parents are watching TV right now, and that's where they're coming from. Of course, their parents' generation used to be on TV. That's the irony of the anarchists. They say the idealism of the 60s disintegrated into a capitalist ideal. I believe that the system of violence and usurpation that's going on on the planet right now and it has to be stood up against. We don't have time. You, you stare at the television and you see logos and, and you're in a daze and these symbols pop up everywhere in your life. When, when that is shattered, it breaks a spell. And we're trying to get people to wake up before it's too late.